Oh my gosh. It is an absolutely gorgeous. Just a little bit chilly. Good God. Monday morning, April 13th, 2020, here in the great state of Texas, I've got wool socks, sheepskin boots, two shirts, and an Alaska parka sitting in my living room uh, in the middle of April in Texas. The world has gone crazy, but anyway, this is cold. This is Collapse Chronicles. This is Collapse Chronicles. I am Sam Mitchell, and this is my little, uh, my little co-pilot, Sancho Panza, doing what we do, uh, and that's chronicling the collapse of a planet. So today, guys, it's Monday, April 13th, 2020, and I don't know how many of you down here in the collapse of fear know what today is. Today is the sixth uh, anniversary of when my hero Michael C. Rupert uh, just stuck a gun in his mouth and blew the top of his head off with his dog locked in the car. Where Michael Rupert, I just say Michael Rupert lost his sick twisted sense of humor and it had enough and uh, decided to check out and what a voice we lost uh, six years ago today so anyway i was going to dedicate today's collapse chronicle to a a eulogy to <coughs> michael rupert i i tried to write one myself guys but I just, uh, I, 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 I could not come up with the words to do uh, any justice to that man. Uh, so I, I remembered this eulogy before from uh, Jesse Ray, a friend of Mike's Jesse Ray. So I went on and tried to find Jesse's eulogy, but I noticed it has been ripped down all <coughs> versions of it, the uh, videos of it, written versions of it. If anybody can find Jesse Ray's, <coughs> damn it, this dry hacking cough that I have here. If anybody can find that uh, eulogy, please send me a link to it and maybe I will add that in another video. So anyway, instead, I can't find the one I wanted. This is uh, a eulogy from Jenna Orkin, a colleague and friend of Michael's and the author of The Morons, the Morons Guide to Global Collapse. Uh, we have to get Jenna on the show for The Morons Guide to Global Collapse. Uh, Anyway, these were some of Jenna's words to say goodbye to her friend, Michael C. Rupert. <clears throat> Mike Rupert was a complex, brilliant, infuriating, funny, impossible, honest, usually never boring, enraged, musical, competitive, generous, contradictory, dog-loving, dog-loving, horse-whispering, childlike giant who happened to be right about the most important problems facing the world today. <clears throat> a psychologist once said, you cannot have just a baby's foot, meaning you can't have the cute parts of a baby without the sleepless nights and dirty diapers. Similarly, you cannot have Mike's unique gifts to the world without the upheaval he generated around him. To lionize him does not do him justice. He doesn't need it. He had his demons, both internal and external. In fact, 
He epitomized the old Saul. Just because you're paranoid does not mean they are not following you. Michael once said, quote, there is a deep flaw in me and that is the source of everything I have done, close quote. Driven to flee his own devils, he fought for greater ones on the global stage. And although he did not succeed in single-handedly shifting the paradigm of the global economy, he got further than just about anyone else. <clears throat> You don't have to perform the mind-bending feat of accepting death by self-inflicted gunshot wound as a peace offering in order to show him respect. To paraphrase Mike's own eulogy to Gary Webb, who also killed himself, only Mike knows why he finally did it after threatening for at least eight years. Some of Mike's accomplishments, <clears throat> from uncovering CIA drug dealing, he went on to found FromTheWilderness.com, which revealed how the U.S. banking system looted Russia after the fall of the USSR. <clears throat> From the Wilderness also published documents <clears throat> which helped secure the release of CIA spy Edwin Wilson and who had been convicted on the basis of perjured testimony by a CIA executive director. But one of his greatest achievements occurred around 9-11 at From the Wilderness and in his book Crossing the Rubicon Mike showed that four months before the attacks, Vice President Dick Cheney had been put in charge of war game exercises and that in spite of the multiple warnings from foreign intelligence agencies in the White House concerning a terrorist attack the week of September 9th, at least five war games had been scheduled for that morning which drew planes away from the East Coast where they would have been able to intercept the hijacked planes to Alaska, Northern Canada, Greenland, and Iceland. <clears throat> From the wilderness also revealed insider trading exorbitant numbers of put options on the airlines involved in the attacks, a sure red flag that a major disaster was about to take place. So uh, you understand that Mike, uh, <clears throat> to his, uh, he, 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 you know, one, one of the reasons he was so controversial is that he was a 9-11 truther. Uh, that, that is not uh, what attracted me to him, however. Anyway, getting back, <clears throat> the best way to honor Mike is to understand and educate others on the fundamental lessons that he taught. First, his favorite line, quote, until you change the way money works, you change nothing. An economy based on infinite growth cannot continue indefinitely on a finite planet. Resources are being depleted as population growth marches on. I think that Mike was a non-breeder. I'm not sure. The population currently stands at seven times what it was when oil started being used to fuel the economy. No matter how smart our technology becomes, as easy oil inevitably wanes, the replacements cannot fill in at the same rate, certainly not without poisoning the air, water, and soil, as well as huge swaths of people. And referring here to all of these unconventional sources of oil, such as fracking, you know, such as shale oil, and the uh, Alberta tar sands oil, that's the kind of stuff he's talking about. 
If we do not deal with this now, it will deal with us later and at far greater cost. That's what Mike has been trying to tell everyone for 10 years. Relocalize, grow food, not laws, and end our current economic system of fiat currency, fractional reserve banking and interest. Do that and Mike will be able to rest in peace. Thank you, Jenna Orkin. And then guys, I just cannot help but read a, a, uh, a, uh, a, a, a few paragraphs from another eulogy to Michael Rupert. I am not going to utter the name of the person writing this eulogy to Mike Rupert. I do not utter this reprehensible narcissist name on this channel, but I, do, I can't resist it. Take it away, the reprehensible narcissist. <clears throat> Michael C. Rupert discovered my work in April 2012. Yes, uh, so we already have, uh, anyway. He contacted me. Hmm. Yes, via email that month while I was on a speaking tour. Hmm. And we connected via Skype the following day. I was interviewed by Michael on the Lifeboat Hour four times. Yes. Michael became a huge supporter of my work shortly after making contact. Yes. <sighs> In supporting my work, Michael increased my reach and credibility. <sighs> I am inspired by his work and his life, and I will strive to reach his high standards with my own work. Oh, Jesus. Oh, no. <laughs> Don't even get me going. I gotta remember what channel I'm on. But anyway, uh, despite that, uh, <laughs> disquieting eulogy to Michael Rupert, that insulting slap in the face to Michael Rupert. Uh, Michael Rupert, wherever you are, we do miss you, brother. Uh, Michael Rupert, one of my heroes. Uh, obviously, if you have not seen the documentary, it's called Collapse. Just, uh, it's, I'm sure it's all over YouTube, Collapse by Michael Rupert. Uh, if you are new to this rabbit hole, uh, that is one of the most important 90 minutes of video on YouTube. They haven't yanked it down, and I also highly recommend uh, Apocalypse, comma, man, Apocalypse Man by Vice News, which you can also find on YouTube. Uh, I think, unless they rip that one down. Anyway, uh, Michael Rupert, R.I.P. We miss you, buddy.